Hey YouTubers and live video videoers, thought I would come out and uh, um, do another video. Had the day off, so here I am once again. Um, I kind of wanted to still harp on the old uh, idea of metaphor, which I've been yapping about in my last videos. Somebody pointed out that I used the word yap. I guess where I come from in my part of the country, uh, that's what it would be. I yap into my microphone. At any rate, um, me personally, I believe that we, every day, recreate ancient legends, legends, uh, um, in our lives, and, uh, we do that to release, uh, our, uh, human potential. So, I'm gonna get on with, uh, explaining how all this happened. However, first, um, which is what I really want to talk about. Um, the Kenya National Museum um, is getting uh, ready to show an awesome uh, display of foss fossils. Um, really, really old ancient stuff. Uh, they're going to have Takana Boy there. And uh, uh, they uh, had a lot of money dumped into it from the... Uh, the uh, European Union, so uh, they're getting ready to open. They they have uh, re refurbished their uh, museum down there. However, half the country is, or majority of the population in Kenya happens to be evangelical Christian, so they're dealing with issues there. And again, the whole debate between science and religion uh, ends up being brought to the media. Um, I believe that uh, those protesting, uh, there was something like maybe uh, six million, um, six million um, uh, to to uh, Kenya's Pentecostal uh, Pentecostal denomination there, and they were all getting uh, together. They were lobbying the European Union about what um, they could and couldn't show there, and, and it was just a mess. And I've said it before, um, Bible scholars make really, really bad scientists because that's not their medium. It's Bible. And scientists, um, in turn, make really bad theologians and Bible scholars um, because I've read a lot of stuff where... Um, even in passing, um, things are taken out of context, just like a Bible scholar talking about um, science would take things and mess it all up. Even though, after he's done messing it all up, uh, he would get a pat on the back by his peers. You showed them. And, same for the scientist, he would get a pat on the back. Yeah, you really told them, religious fanatics. And the war and the debate would still Ray John. But I happened to uh, be reading the Epic of Gilgamesh. I actually, I actually finished it. And here we have a classic example of the ancient legend being played out today. And maybe you don't think so. However, uh, this is just my uh, humble opinion about, uh, about what's taking place. And the metaphor even though we use it in our everyday lives, we recreate things, and it helps ex explain things about our lives, it should never be taken as actual fact. So, as some people, like Joseph Campbell, have said, he's one of my favorite authors. That's not the only thing I read, but he says, a myth is a fact that never happened. And it happens all the time, every day, the scenario of it. However, if, if you go to place time periods and dates and all that sort of thing, Although it's interesting, it ends up being used the wrong way, and it causes all kinds of trouble. So while um, people should be embracing one another and helping one another out in these areas of thought, uh, instead there's a, there's a huge conflict. And uh, ever since the Scopes Monkey Trial and um, all the issues that that created, the evangelical move movement had until um, maybe up to 20, 30 years ago 
hightailed it. They totally went into seclusion. They they pulled all their kids out of public schools. They homeschool them. Even still, a lot of evangelical Protestants still homeschool. Still uh, send send children to their own schools. Pulled them out of the and 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 in my opinion, that did a great disservice to um, understanding the other's point of view. Which, if you're going to wrestle, you wrestle it out. You don't run and hide from it. So, I am in full support of digging up fossils that are bazillion years old. Because, when the text about the dating in the biblical text talk about the days and the six, six days, that's metaphor. And a lot of times... They say, oh, it says in the Bible that the thousand years is one day with God, blah, blah, blah. But that just meant a long time. I'm not trying to explain that. I'm not trying to explain intelligent design. I'm not trying to explain creationism here. However, I'm just saying it's a long time. I'm not even saying that the deities did create man. All I'm saying is that what evangelicals think is a mapped out time period in the biblical text as far as age. When the Bible scholars and, and the writers wrote that, they meant just a long period of time. So, getting back to the, the wrestling between the primitive and the modern or civilized. Um, civilized today is a loaded term, I don't mean that. Uh, back um, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, uh, which they believe came around uh, maybe 3,500 uh, or 3,300 or 3,000 BC. It's it's pretty early, and the only thing that predates it by 500 years, which is the 3,500 that I was thinking of, was was an ancient Egyptian text. So they're they're right around the same time period. So uh, h here we talk. Here we find out when Enkidu comes out of the primitive forest. He ends up being domesticated or seemingly civilized by the temple prostitute that he sleeps with. And uh, he's brought to the city. And um, he meets Gilgamesh. Now, now Gilgamesh uh, knew he was coming because he, he, had, he had all kinds of dreams. And um, parts of that relates to the uh, story of Joseph in the Bible. So... All, all that sort of things were, were going on. So, so here we have when Gilgamesh and Enkidu um, duke it out. And if you think of Enkidu as the primitive meeting the city-state civilization Gilgamesh. And here is how they react. Uh, this is this is a beautiful translation of, of this. Uh, there's there's plenty of loaded things in here. Then Enkidu stepped out. He stood in the street and blocked the way. Mighty Gilgamesh came on and Enkidu met him at the gate. He put out his foot and prevented Gilgamesh from entering the house. So they grappled, holding each other like bulls. They broke the doorposts and the wall shook. They snorted like bulls, locked together. They shattered the doorposts and the walls shook. Gilgamesh bent his knee with his foot planted on the ground, and with a turn, Enkidu was thrown. Then immediately, his fury died. When Enkidu was thrown, he said to Gilgamesh, "This is not another. There is not another like you in the world, Ninsun, who is as strong as a wild ox in the bray. She was the mother who bore you, and now you are raised above all men, and Enli has given you the kingship. For your strength surpasses the strength of men. So Enkidu and Gilgamesh embraced, and their friendship was sealed. So here, here we have the hassle. We have the battle. One side's thrown. The other side recognizes the other side. Conflict resolved. Uh, they're best friends. And in the end, Gilgamesh um, is, is very bothered by the death of Enkidu. And um, that's the way it should be. Primitive, civilized, hand in hand, figuring uh, things out. Because the metaphor, the metaphor is pretty powerful. And the metaphor still needs to be used to, um, in my opinion, needs, still needs to be used to describe the abstract. So, 
take care. Uh, don't even know how this is going to go over, but that's just my, my thoughts. So...